pleasant good morning to you and welcome to another edition of Soul to Soul Ministry Moment. I am so glad that you are here and I hope that you had an amazing Resurrection Sunday celebration. I know we did. At Gateway we celebrated with our communion, our first communion online. And we had a beautiful video presentation highlighting the life of Jesus Christ. We went into the Word and afterwards we had an absolutely incredible time of praise and worship celebration. I think it leads us right into what we're going to talk about today. Everything that we celebrated during the Holy Week has to do with our faith. Our faith in God the Father, our faith in God the Son and His assignment, and our faith that we have the Spirit of God inside of us right now. And so we're going to continue with the dilemma of our faith. Again, the dilemma of our faith. And I'm going to ask you what I asked last week. How is your faith level? Hopefully, by the end of this segment, you would elevate your faith by studying the Word of God with me to face every challenge that's going to confront you this week. We take life day by day. Don't look too far into the future. So my objective today is to help elevate your faith today so that God will speak to your heart no matter what the challenges are and you will come through it successfully. Father, I thank you right now for the study we're going to have and I pray that you touch our minds and our souls and our hearts as we enter into this study. You will bless us. You will elevate our faith. Now, God, we thank you in advance with great expectations for the future. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, we talked about faith being the linchpin that holds the entire construct of Christianity together. Without faith, the Christian life is completely non-functional. But if faith is properly understood and grasped and realized, everything begins to fit back into its place perfectly according to God's will. A key component to our faith is found in the study that we're going to get into today, which is called Transformation of Faith. And I hope you have your Bibles because we're going to do a little bit of talking this morning, reading from the Word of God. Now, Transformation of Faith, the product of transformation is a thorough and dramatic change in your thought life. And when your thought life is changed, your faith level is elevated. When your thought life and your faith life is elevated, your character is changed and elevated. Our faith mandate is to trust, transform, and to transition from our initial measure of faith into an evolving life of a mature faith that is in pursuit of a new, advanced, and a purposeful life. Last week, I introduced you to two transformational faith facts. I was only able to get to one, and that was the principle of recognition. Now, very briefly, I want to review the principle of recognition in order to transition into faith fact number two. The principle of recognition. This is important because without any initial record awareness of anything, there can be no deep understanding of it. In essence, unless we are aware of God, how can we understand God? I'll go a little deeper with that. Unless we are aware of God, how can we even worship God? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 Paul writes he says for he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him hear me well recognition requires a transformed mind the transformed mind must make a verbal and a lifestyle covenant with God in order to operate within God's Word I think this is a good segue in our talk today which we're going to be talking about transformation of faith fact number two, which is the principle of reconditioning. The principle of reconditioning. Now, please hear me. This is based on Paul's writing to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. In verse 2, he says this, and it's very critical. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now, the principle of recognition is the process of reconditioning your mind which is necessary for our ability to reinterpret all of our experiences through the lens of God's Word. 
When we do so, what happens is that our expectation level rises because the word of God will give us, watch this now, the word of God will give us a spirit of anticipating God to do what he said he's going to do. In essence, we can anticipate God's supernatural hand in our situation. And when we anticipate God's supernatural hand in our situation, there is a predetermined outcome that God has already written in the heavenlies that he wants to release inside of the earth. The God outcome says this, no matter what the circumstance and no matter what the dilemma, all things work together for our good. Now verse 3 in the book of Romans that Paul wrote to the church at Rome says this, For I say, through the grace given me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. He says, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. In essence, faith is not complete. Our faith is a work in progress. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, Paul goes on to write, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Wow. But then faith requires information. Faith requires a transformation of the mind. There are three observations to consider concerning the mind. The first thing to consider, the neutrality of the mind. The mind only has the position that you give it. I'm going to say it again. The neutrality of the mind states that the mind only has the position that you give it. Here's the second observation. The centrality of the mind. It is a battleground. It is the middle ground for control. And thirdly, the indispensability of the mind. It follows orders, which is critical for life. Now please hear me today. The mind is constantly looking for information to validate the instructions that you gave it. It is always looking for new information and instructions in order to function. And so I want to give you this power thought today. When you manage your mind, you can manage your life. When you manage your mind, you can manage your life. And that's powerful. You see, we can overcome the anxiety and the disappointments and the fear in life by focusing on faith declarations that's given to us within the scriptures. Today I want to give you three faith declarations taken from the Jesus experience at the tomb of Lazarus. It was his friend. It was a moment that the entire world was watching. And so we find our first faith declaration from the Word of God found in John chapter 11 verse 38 through 31. The first faith declaration we need to embrace today is this. Transformational faith accepts God's plan. It accepts God's plan. Listen, when the sister of Lazarus came to Jesus for him to heal her, when you read the story, it plays out this way. He tells her, yes, I will come. But he takes his time getting there. In fact, he went on another assignment when you read the Bible, only to show up after Lazarus has died and he's been buried. Now you can imagine that the sisters were a little upset with Jesus, not understanding why, but you have to understand the mindset of Jesus. Jesus already knew that God had a plan. He already knew that there was a manifestation from the kingdom of heaven that God wanted to release in the earth that required Lazarus to die. I'm going to say it again. There was a release that God intended to come upon the earth that required Lazarus to die. There are some things that's going to die in your life that God wants to die. Some things he will resurrect, others he will not. But the thing is, we must have faith in God's plan. And how do we do that? We must transcend the complexity and the uncertainty of what we think is happening. But let's go to John chapter 11. Look at verse 38 through 41. And it reads like this. Then Jesus came groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. And Jesus said, 
take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Wow, what an amazing declaration of faith. I thank you that you have heard me. He hadn't even prayed yet. <laughs> but obviously Jesus understood the plan of God. He had already accepted the plan of God. And when he did pray, he prayed on behalf of those that were there. But he was thanking God in advance of what God was about to do. Now watch this now. Jesus is about to ask something from them that represents his faith in what God is going to do. He said, remove the stone. Let's continue to read. Boy, because I tell you, this is getting good to me. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying and Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Listen, here's the thing you've got to do. You've got to remove the stone of defeat. And when you do, God will deliver. Here's something about that stone that was in front of the, the grave of Lazarus. It's the same stone that's in front of us. The stone represented conclusion. It represented closure. It represented the conclusion of man's efforts. We've done all we can do for Lazarus. It represented the sealing of one's faith. He's already dead. There's nothing else we can do. You see, the misguided mentality of the moment must first be removed. Now, you're going through some things and you've already drawn some conclusions about your health. You've drawn some conclusions about your relationships. You've drawn some conclusions about your future. That's the stone that Jesus wants you to remove. That's the weight that the Bible talks about, laying aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us. In essence, we've got to stop second-guessing God concerning our life. Now, here's the second transformational declaration. Transformational faith exhibits courageous expectation. In essence, you've got to move beyond what you see. Because the flesh is going to show you some dire situations. The flesh is going to interpret what you see. You've got to move beyond what you see. I said it on Sunday. Seeing is not believing. When Donnie Thomas was told that Jesus was alive, he said, except I see him. Except, except I see the nail prints in his hand and is able to put my fingers in the print and thrust my hand into his side, that is the only way I will believe. Let me tell you something about faith. Faith cometh by hearing, transformational word of God for the mind, and hearing by the word of God. Now, faith takes on a different dimension. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. So seeing is not believing. So we've got to operate with within the audacity of hope. In that sense, we've got to declare the answer to our dilemma. The answer to our dilemma is whatever God says it is. Let's go to John chapter 11 once again, because again, I think there's some important facts here about the death of and resurrection of Lazarus that we need to take a look at. Look at verse 42. Jesus is still praying. I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. <laughs> now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. My God, my God, Lazarus, come forth. Here's another principle. When you pray in faith, you better pray specific. Pray what God tells you to pray. No, now, this is Jesus. He's the resurrection. He's about to call to speak into the void. If he had just said, come forth, every person that was born and died from Genesis to that point would have come out of the grave. But he only wanted Lazarus. So he was very specific. He said, Lazarus, come forth. 
We've got to learn how to speak into the void with specific decorations of God. We've got to speak the word of the Lord. We've got to speak deliverance. If God wants to bring increase, we've got to speak increase. If God wants to bring healing, we've got to speak healing. If God wants to bring process before the healing and deliverance, we've got to speak process into the void. Now, here's what the word of God says in, Eli in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. This is what God does. God declares the end from the beginning. That's what the word of the Lord says. He declares the end from the beginning. In essence, everything that's happening right now, God has already written it. It's already been declared. What we're going through right now, God has already declared it. It has already been written in the heavenlies. And now it's coming to pass. Here's the next thing it says in Isaiah 46 and 11. Indeed, this is God speaking. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. My God, my God. Listen, whatever God writes, it's because he declares it. And whatever he declares, he will perform it. All he asks you to do is to obey and to believe. Now, let's go to transformational declaration number three. Transformational faith waits on absolute, with absolute confidence. It waits with absolute confidence. Transformational faith rests in God's sovereignty despite the conditions of our dilemma. See, while we're waiting, we need to learn how to give praise and thanksgiving for what God is about to do because we believe that He is and He's a reward of those that diligently seek Him and have faith in Him. Praise and thanksgiving must replace the empty silence between the removed obstacle and the awaiting miracle. It must replace it. We've got to learn how to praise God between the time that God speaks into our life to speak into our void. We have to wait on God to move. While we're waiting, let's give thanks. Let's rejoice because we know that God is going to come through. Now, I want to share something with you about God's timing. It's found inside Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. He says, for the vision, vision means this, it is the redemptive revelation of a thing. In essence, God is going to give you a redemptive revelation about your healing, about your deliverance, about what you're going through. He's going to give you that redemptive revelation. He's going to bring you through it. He says, for the vision or the redemptive revelation is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry oh you need to get this inside of your spirit today listen your redemptive revelation for what you're going through right now god has already spoken it god is waiting to release it and what is he waiting on he's waiting for his exact and perfect timing he says though it tarries wait for it and it goes on to say it will not tarry it almost sound like it's uh, an oxymoron He's saying, listen, there's a specific time and season for it to come. Wait for it. And when that season has come upon you and the perfect time is there, it will no longer tarry because it's going to come when I've declared it to become. It won't happen one day sooner and it's not going to happen one second later. When God has determined your healing, your deliverance, and he, brings, he wants to bring you through something, it's going to happen in God's perfect timing. Here's the last thing. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. It says, Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. I'm going to ask you again as I conclude this session. Where is your faith level? I pray that we've said something today that will help elevate your faith, that will bring you to a realization that you have no need to worry, that you don't need to fear, that God is behind the scene orchestrating every single thing to its divine conclusion and you can trust him. I want to pray for you that God would touch you today, that God would touch your faith level, that God would touch your life, that you will live it by faith. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for the opportunity once again to come to you with prayer from not only myself, but for those that believe and even the unbeliever that's listening to this broadcast today. I pray that you help us to elevate our faith through the study and transformation of our minds through your word of God, your word of God. 
I pray that you help us, dear God, to, to move according to your will, to believe that you're everything you say you are, to believe that we can do everything you say we can do. Our trust lie in you. We need you in this time of crisis. We need you, Father. And so knowing who you are, we can place our trust in you and therefore we can walk in your peace and we can live in your joy. We thank you today and we declare that all needs are met according to your will and according to your perfect timing. Thank you in advance for your healing. Thank you in advance for your deliverance. Thank you in advance for bringing us through every single trial and temptation and conflict that we may be experiencing and that we will experience in the future. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you next week on another edition of Soul to Soul Ministry Moment. Have an amazing day.